Hey, welcome to WR Live. Wow, this has been a bit of a journey for us to get things going. Um, we had a few technical difficulties, eh, Dave? We did, yeah. Actually, uh, I'm trying to lose a lot of weight. Uh, so uh, I, I was biking over to the studio tonight and uh, I got a flat tire uh, partway through and uh, I was like stuck on the highway. I had so that was tire that's why we're late coming on the show. Okay, I like that excuse. <laughs> Uh, no, we just had a, a, you know, when anything goes wrong, it goes wrong. And uh, we fixed it, though. I think we're good, Dave. We are here and ready yeah. to go. So, um, this is our first episode of WR Live. Uh, we are Dave and Bruce from the T 2K Zone, just in, just in case anybody doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. And we are very excited to be partnering with the WR League um, on this new show. Yep. And uh, we will be live streaming the show every Monday night on WR Twitch channel at 7 p.m. So don't, if you haven't already, follow, follow, don't follow, no, follow WR Twitch channel. Um, and then as well, follow the 2K Zone on our Twitter. Um, it will be constantly updated and notifications, kind of like what we did today, because things Absolutely. were kind of a little slow and uh, it took a bit of time to do it. So, yep. yeah, so... Uh, so first off, we should we should big uh, give a big shout out and a big thank you to uh, the WR League for working with us on uh, on helping to put this show together and making this possible. We got a lot of great content planned for you guys, uh, so let's get right to it. All right, Dave. So in in our show we have uh, three segments. We do. And uh, each episode will start off with a pro tip segment, and uh, this is where we bring on an expert who will give some very valuable tips as to how to prepare to qualify for the NBA 2K League Season 3. Absolutely. Not only that, the second segment, um, many of you know that we did prospect profile interviews before Season 2. We're going to bring that back and we're going to feature a WR League prospect every week and we're going to ask really good questions that will help you to reveal yourself as a player, as a person, uh, reveal your character, and it's going to help the league GMs and coaches to really learn about you as a player and a prospect for their team. So. Yes, and then in our final section, uh, we'll have our WR League updates, where we will highlight all of the latest game results. Mm -hmm. um, so Dave, what do you think? So we should probably just get right to it, since we're a little late getting to the game here. Let's go. Uh, we're going to bring on our very first guest. Uh, in our pro tip segment, so we are very excited to have this guest. This man is the team manager mm -hmm. and coach of the Wizards District Gaming, mm -hmm. and he is here to share his tips for all prospects looking to make it into the NBA 2K League Season 3. So, please welcome to the show, Patrick Crossan. Patrick, thanks for your patience and thanks for joining the show. What's up, guys? How are you? Thanks we're, for we're thanks really for inviting good. me. I, I heard you call me an expert earlier. I don't know if that's true, but <laughs> hey, you're, you're, a you. <laughs> you're a professional. You made it in. Yes. You know, you got to be at some point start wearing that title. You know, that's uh, that's what comes with the badge. That is true. That is true. I'm just the guy who loves 2K too much. That's how <laughs> I like that's that. That's awesome. So we just want to get to know you a little bit better, Patrick. So let's start off with um, how long have you been playing NBA 2K? And how did you get started? Uh, so I've been playing 2K, probably NBA 2K 11s when I started. Um, you know, I, I would just play with friends from school. I was back in high school back then. So we would just, you know, after school, we'd get home, play the game a little bit, uh, compete in tournaments, some seasons on Game Battles, this website that had team up. So it was like a 2v2 to 5v5 mode. Um, and you would control an NBA player. So I kind of got into 2K that way. And then later on, you know, pro amp came and crew mode, and it was crazy to make a guy that just like yourself, and then you can like, you know, mess with his attributes, uh, play five on five basketball. So it was just like real life. So once that happened, it was just the, uh, you know, love at first sight, so to say. <laughs> well, Patrick, uh, you and I have uh, something in common because you know I'm I'm trying to build a uh, player that is you know replicates me in real life so uh i'm going to be coming into season three yeah. with a, a five eight point guard uh weighing 190 pounds who can't jump yeah. and runs really slow so uh we'll see how that works out but uh but anyway when the nba first announced the nba 2k league 
Um, but before we get to that, I got another question here. Okay. Uh, how did you become team manager and coach for Wizards DG? Like, how did how did that all come together? So I was competing in leagues and tournaments, like I said. Um, when the league was announced, I was like, I, I've got to be involved in this somehow. Um, and I was in the process of trying out. I was probably 20 games in for season one in the combine. Uh, also applied to a couple, you know, team manager jobs. The Wizards here, they had a couple interviews. We had like four or five phone interviews. They flew me in, uh, and halfway through the combine, they offered me the job. So I said, I'll take it. I thought it would be a little bit better for me, you know, job prospects later on. I didn't know how players would be, you know, the retainment process would, would work. Um, I'm a little bit older, 26, 27. So I think, my, I think my professional career is a little over at this point, but uh, I love to help the guys that we got. You know, Patrick, we did a, uh, a a bit of research we had a guy do some research um steve and he found out that our um, our fingers and the dexterity in our fingers the speed at which they can play start to reduce around the age of 25 26 so uh i don't know maybe that's maybe there's something to that eh no i've definitely noticed it by hands you know i'm getting some carpal tunnel or something they start to bother <laughs> me when i play now <laughs> yeah uh so what are your thoughts so far on nba 2k20 Ooh, 2K20, I mean, it's a whole new game. Every year, it's it's basically like a, a whole new thing you have to figure out. Um, so I'm really curious to see some guys who were good last year to see how they're going to be good this year. You know, are they going to fall off? Every year, 2K, if you don't improve yourself, you're just going to fall behind in the dust. Um, and then there's always those guys who come out of nowhere who have a great, you know, season right now in Pro-Am. Um, make it to the league, and sometimes they can't make those adjustments. So it, it's a it's a good experience watching these guys, watching these Twitch streams. Uh, I heard private matchmaking is working now. I haven't been able oh. to test it today, but I'm hoping it is working. Fingers crossed. Uh, Fingers crossed. So, so Patrick, as as a coach in the league now for two seasons, uh, you've seen a lot of players, um, and we really want to help the uh, the prospects out there to. To really hear from professionals like you, like what a good teammate is. So, can you describe, in your opinion, what uh, like for a player, what is a good teammate, in your opinion? Yeah. So I think uh, being a good teammate, you know, you can take a lot of stuff from professional sports or just growing up playing uh, organized basketball or really any other organized sport. Um, you look at our guys. You know, Ryan played college baseball. Gilly played college basketball. He's going to play college basketball. Um, so these guys know what, what teamwork is, you know, you, you come in this, I mean, this is our practice room right here. So you're playing eight, 12 hour days, you know, you're going to have arguments with, with your teammates. It's understanding that at the end of the day, you can have those arguments, but you have to become better after it. Um, take nothing personal, you know, you have to have that same mindset, that same goal to hopefully compete for a championship and, and come together closer as a team and, the bonds that you create with your guys, I think, make it stronger for you playing in the studio. Right. Now, as we gear up and prospects are, are getting ready, uh, how do they demonstrate to you as a coach or other coaches and GMs um, that they are a good teammate? How, how would they go about showcasing that pretty important skill? I think the best thing is to stream on Twitch. You know, when we get to watch those, you know, as a coach, uh, it's very important. We try to take the social cues that how they talk to their teammates when they're up, how they talk when they're down, and how they talk when a close game. Um, you know, you don't want a guy who's going to be negative all the time. That, that's going to drain a team out very quickly throughout the season. And I think we've seen that with a couple of teams. We've learned it personally ourselves. Um, but, you know, you can never be negative, and it's very easy to be negative when you're down. Like, we started 0-4 uh, this season. It would have been easy for us to just, you know, point out the negatives. But someone has to be that spark to kind of show the positives and kind of make a change for the better. Yeah, great answer. And, uh, and Patrick, if you could, uh, uh, like, if prospects watching this show, if you could point to one or two players in the league uh, who you think would be a good role model in terms of being a really good teammate, yeah. Uh, which players would you identify? 
Oh man, you're putting me on the spot. There's so many. <laughs> well, well, I gotta say our two guys first. You know, oh, Ryan. There you go. Of course. <laughs> that's, that's the uh, PR answer, right? But I mean, obviously, Ryan. He's a guy in the community. Everyone knows he's taking it upon himself to kind of be a leader on and off the court. Uh, so for him, that competitive mindset is something that I think people should try to emulate. That you need to come into every game with your best, and if you don't, we've seen in this league, you take a loss, that could be your season right there. Um, and then you got your other guy, Reese, who's I wouldn't say he's more carefree, but he's more uh, you know he has a smile on his face, a little upbeat, but he still takes it as seriously as Ryan. Um, but you know, with, with a guy like that, he, he's easy to be around, and, and whenever you see him in a room, he has a smile on his face. Right, and when. We've all heard the term um, battling through adversity, right? So when things get tough, what would you say, how would you put, what does this sort of term for you as a coach mean and how would you apply that to a player? Yeah, so adversity for me, I, I mean, it can mean anything. It can mean in a game, can be outside of a game. Um, everyone hits adversity in their life, some kind of low point that they got to get through. Um, and I told our guys throughout the season that, you know, every championship team in every single sport, they have to hit adversity at some point in the season. And how they respond to that is why they're a championship team. I'll pick a couple teams out, you know, for this season, for the 2K League. The T-Wolves, for an example, you know, they lost their coach. They had a midseason trade. I don't think they started so well. So they, they had to go on a big win streak at the, towards the end, yeah. uh, you know, and they won the championship. They, I think they ended like 10 and 6 or something like that. So for them to go through that, they came together stronger as a team. Um, and for the better, you know, they won the championship. And then for us, we started 0-4. Uh, we didn't make the playoffs, unfortunately. Uh, but we gave ourselves a shot throughout the season, which without our guys buying into the system and buying into mm -hmm. each other, it wouldn't have happened. It would have been very easy for us to roll over and say, all right, we're 0-4. We'll just tank for the first pick or whatever. I don't ever want that to happen as long as I'm here with DG. Um, you know, we're going to go out and compete every single game. We're going to try to make the playoffs. We fell out short, I think, about two games. Um, and I can even say, you know, in the Vegas tournament uh, this season, the turn, uh, we got blown out by the Magic first round. And I remember taking the guys in the back room, and I just told them, like, I don't have anything else to say to you. We're 0-4. We just got blown out. It's on ourselves to, to fix this. And then yeah. you know, the next week we beat the uh, Bucks and Jazz. So two big games. So I was pretty proud of them for that. So for yourself personally, um, how much adversity have you had to deal with uh, either in making the league as a manager and coach uh, or even outside of that to, in your everyday life? Um, maybe you can just talk about adversity you've been through. Yeah. So uh, a great example is, you know, Michael Jordan got cut from his high school team. Uh, I did too my freshman year, and, and I remember that I went in the car with my dad, and I was pissed. Like, I didn't know how I didn't make it. I, you know, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I was better than a lot of those kids. Um, but I got in that car, and I had to tell my dad, and he, he gave me some of the best advice someone's ever given to me. He said, you can either like, keep crying about it, or you can go and do something, you know, improve yourself over the offseason and make the team next year. And, and I think that's the best way to respond to adversity. You can let it soak in and consume you, or you can actually do something about it and make a difference. Can you think of a, an example of a player this year in, in season two that sort of demonstrated an, an, a really good example of having to really fight through adversity and then came through on the other side? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think. I'll keep it to us because I, I know our team the best. Um, you know, we put reset point guard those qu first couple of games, um, and we fought in those games. We fought hard. Uh, we almost pulled out some good good wins against some good teams, the Mavs, the Heat. Um, and, and, you know, for whatever reason, it just didn't work. You know, he was obviously frustrated. We put him back at the small forward position, and he, he ended the season as a third leading scorer in the league. Um, so for him to do that, he honestly gave us a shot to make the playoffs. And he and Ryan, you know, Got into it one practice a little bit as teammates need to, uh, but it was a good constructive feedback session that they both needed. And right after that, we started winning and everyone was jumping. Nice, very nice. nice. Now, I mean, it's inevitable uh, in life. You know, we're all going to face adversity at some point, mm -hmm. and all the prospects out there, um, as they're gearing up for the qualification for season three, 
they're going to run into adversity uh, guaranteed. Uh, and you touched a little bit uh, earlier about you know how you fought through that, but outside of that, um, can you share uh, for them maybe some tips or strategies uh, that the prospects could use you know when they're dealing with this this adversity? Yeah, so I mean, I think the perfect thing is the combine. You know, you're playing with random people all over the world or you know all over America. Um, you're going to get in games where people aren't going to pass you the ball and all this and that. And I know how frustrating it is. Um, just realize that one game's probably not going to get you kicked out of you know being the top 100. Um, you got to play all those games, get your stats. The best thing to do is get on the mic and talk to guys. I, I know when they don't have a mic as hard. Usually, <laughs> it, it is be rule number one. It should you gotta be. have a mic. I've been in that same situation, trust me. <laughs> um, but I, I've kind of found that you know if you're likely to pass to someone who's open, they're probably going to respond the favor. Um, you know, at another point in the game, if it happens and you're open and maybe they have the ball. Um, so you kind of have to work with that, you know, just talking to guys like, hey, you know, we're all we're all here for a reason to make the 2K League. You know, obviously everyone wants their stats, but the win's the most important thing that does get factored into your uh, your combine scores. So, you know, obviously uh, someone with a high win percentage is more likely to get in than someone with, you know, high points per game and a low win percentage. Right. So um, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, I've got one more question for you. Uh, just we'd love to hear what your plans are for the off season. Yeah, so I, I've got a ton of plans right now. I'm actually going to uh, the wi Wizards um, opening camp tomorrow. So I get All to right. watch that. That'll be pretty cool to see. Um, but here at Monumental Sports uh, Entertainment, it's the company that owns us, the Wizards, the Mystics, the WMA team, uh, and the GoGo, the G League team here. Uh, so that over the summer, they created this monumental basketball family. And, and so basically, you know, our our team, the Wizards, uh, Mystic, and GoGo are now under an umbrella monumental basketball family. So we're going to have a lot more resources that the Wizards have. So we're, we're really excited. I've been talking to a lot of those guys. I actually was talking to the uh, G League head coach, Ryan Richmond, great guy last year. He's going to help out with maybe some plays and, you know, how to work with the team and kind of the stuff there. Um, also talking to Tommy Shepard, the Wizards GM, which, you know, he's an insanely smart guy, uh, very passionate. So as far as GM duties, you know, he'll be able to help me kind of make those moves and, and build a culture for our team that, you know, carries on year to year. Um, so right now, it's just meetings with a lot of those guys, trying to honestly pick anything I can from their brains because uh, you know, they've done this for a while now uh, in a professional sport. So I'm really happy that uh, we're kind of all a basketball family now, so to say, and we get to you know talk to them. And what what better team to emulate than a professional team? Take everything they do well and then translate it to our team. So that's what I'm excited for. Nice. Now, uh, I actually, a question just came up as you were talking. So yeah. if you're okay with this, I got one more really quick question. You do this all day, guys. <laughs> cool. Um, so Ted Lee owns us. Uh, yes. Obviously, you, you know who he is. Uh, but for those that don't, he, uh, he owns uh, you know, Washington Wizards. He owns the uh, NBA 2K League Washington team. He owns, I think, all of Washington. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much. Almost. almost. There's a couple teams, but yeah. Yeah, he's... Yeah. he's... He's a multi-billionaire, and, and we did a, a show a couple of uh, months ago, and we talked about something that, that he, he made a statement not too long ago, and he predicted that in, in 10 years from today, an NBA 2K League player will be better compensated in 10 years than LeBron James is today, uh, and LeBron James makes $35 million a year in salaries. Uh, I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but I just want to hear your thoughts on on if you see the day where, where this might happen for players? So I don't know, 10 years. I don't think it's a bad thing because one, I, my, maybe my salary will go up. So that's not a bad <laughs> thing. Um, but, but I mean, as esports grows and grows, it's just going to become bigger and bigger. Um, I know a lot of our players would like to be compensated more. I don't know if they'll make more than LeBron James, but it, it's wishful thinking, I think. <laughs> it certainly has yeah. the potential with, the yeah. size of uh, esports for sure uh, and what we see over in uh, south korea japan mm -hmm. and china Absolutely. and we just got Definitely. a new team too so yeah TNG, so we're excited for them too join yeah, exactly yeah exactly i mean that's a great announcement that just came out so that's fantastic 
All right, Patrick. Well, we really can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Um, hopefully, uh, in the future, we can circle back and have you back on and, uh, you know, talk about the winning streak that you just went on. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, anytime you want me to come on, I'm, I'm available. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me out here. Shout out to WR and everyone in the chat. Thanks, buddy. So um, we're going to uh, leave Patrick here and we're going to take a short break. Uh, but ex up next, we have another great interview with an NBA 2K League professional. So don't go away. Stay tuned. And I believe even near the end of the show, we've got a contest that we will be announcing. We do. So that was a fantastic interview. That so, was great, yeah. All right, so uh, stick around, guys. We'll be right back. What's good, everybody? It's Paul B., NBA 2K League Pro for Wizards District Gaming for Season 2. If you did not make the NBA 2K League yet, chances are it's not because you're not good at the game. It's probably because you did not get noticed by another team in the league, and that's where 2K Zone comes in. Before season two, 2K Zone did a prospect profile interview for me, and I can honestly say that it played a key role in helping me make the league for season two. Well, for season three, 2K Zone is taking it up a notch. They're now offering prospects to the very own 2K Gamer profile website. I'm really excited about this because it's going to help me get back in the league for season three. The best part is that it's simple, easy, and very quick to set up. The guys at 2K Zone will help you every step of the way and have your custom site up and running in no time. Check them out at 2 kpowerbcom Go to www.2kzn.com to get yours today so that you can stand out from the crowd and get noticed. Good luck and hope to see you all on the big stage in Season 3. All right, so welcome back to WR Live. Uh, so coming up next is our prospect profile segment, uh, also known as our 2K profile. But before we get to our next guest, you will want to make sure that you stick around right to the end of the show because we have something very special uh, to announce. We have a special contest. We're going to be telling you about that at the end of the show, so you will not want to miss this, so stick around. All right, so um, we are very excited to have with us someone who has been in the NBA 2K League since day one. Uh, he was drafted in the fourth round uh, for season one by the Celtics Crossover Gaming and then was retained by the team for season two where uh, this last year he averaged 16.6 uh, .6 points per game. He played a key role in helping the Celtics turn their season around after a very slow start. So please welcome to the show, Profusion. What's going on, guys? Hey, how you doing? Good. How about you guys? Good. Hey, Good. thanks for stick, sticking around uh, during all of our little outages yeah. there. Uh, no you're being very patient, just like Patrick. We really appreciate that. I think I saw at one point the two of you were chatting back and forth. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were catching up. That, well, so that was pretty. Been a long time, kind of. So it yeah. has, yeah. For I, sure. I think uh, Patrick and Profusion uh, they had their own show going. So, uh, uh, we needed to step in there and uh, you know inject put a, our show. Put a stop to it. So exactly. <laughs> All right, so Patrick, we're just going to ask you some questions, get to know you a little bit better, and. Um, we're trying to angle it a little bit from the perspective of a prospect listening to your voice. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're a veteran. You've been in there for two seasons, and um, you know you're vying for season three now. So mm -hmm. um, to get to know you a little bit better, how long have you been playing NBA 2K, and how did how did you get started? Um, honestly, my real life friends got me on the game, like um, NBA 2K 11, when I was in like. I think either middle school, I think I was in middle school, yeah. And then I was just playing the my career mode and I thought it was fun. And I didn't really play like competitively until like 2K17 because I had, didn't really play a lot in high school. So my freshman year of college, like the summer of it, like I really started playing the game and I really started enjoying it. And like, I kind of realized like, hey, I'm kind of good at this game. So <laughs> so like, I'm, I, you know, I just tried my luck on it and I mean, look where I am now. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm still trying to grind my player up to a 65 overall, but uh, <laughs> I think one day yeah. I'll get there. Um, but but going back to before uh, season one and and when the NBA first came out and announced uh, that they were starting this NBA 2K league, I know Bruce and I were really excited about it. But uh, what was your first reaction? Um, I thought it was crazy because I've never heard of something like that. And to a game that I put so many hours in, like I really could make this job like a living and you know it's crazy to think about 
like season one. So, you know, I was going to do whatever I had to do to try and get in. If I had to play the game all day, you know, I played the game all day. So, like, I really worked hard for it. Yeah. And it was crazy to hear. So in, in season one, when you, you first started to try out like everybody else, um, can you kind of take us through what that was like for you trying to make season one? Um, it was definitely the most like stressful thing I've been under because, you know, I heard like 72,000 people were trying and only 102 made it. Like, that's a pretty low odd. So, like, I knew I had to be really like one of the best players. And so, you know, I was just practicing in like leagues like WR, for example, and MPBA, like those, I was just, you know, trying to get as many runs as I could in. And when the combine um, came up, I was just like, you know, I got to go for it. Like, why wouldn't I go for it? You know, this is like a dream job for me. Uh, this is like my favorite game. And, you know, I love video games. So, like, why not go for it? Um, you know, I always kept checking my email every day for when they came out with those emails to see if you made the top 250. And, it, and like, I got it. So, you know. Um, you know, I was so nervous during the first interview because, like, I knew that would make or break it. But, um, you know, this is really stressful, but fun at the same time. I love competing with other people. So, you know, it worked out perfectly. That's awesome. So, I mean, fast forward to the uh, the draft for season one. Uh, 102 people uh, made the draft. And, and for that season, it was a guarantee. If you made the draft, you were going to get drafted. Uh, uh, it's, it's different for season two, and it will be different for season three. But... But being there live, uh, I mean, you knew you were going to get drafted, but when you finally heard your name called by Brendan Donahue uh, as being drafted by the Celtics Crossover Gaming, I mean, what was your, uh, what was your feel? How, what were you feeling and uh, what was your reaction? Uh, I felt like the happiest I've ever been, like really like getting an opportunity to work with the NBA organization, especially like the Celtics. Like I've been watching basketball since I was a kid. So, you know, just get, uh, hearing my name called, just walking up, like, all the cameras on me and, you know, just taking a picture with Brendan Donahue and like that like solidified my job. And, you know, it was awesome. Like, I don't know, it was like, so surreal to me. That's fantastic. And so now luckily you were retained after season one and uh, you just completed your second season with the Celtics. Can you describe to us what it's been like to be an NBA 2K league professional period? um yeah it's a lot of work if you guys think it's not a lot of work you have to definitely put in time to the game um there's long practice hours lots of travel especially um with these new um in season two there were tournaments like outside of new york since boston new york isn't like that far so like a 40 minute flight four hour train ride um there's a lot of travel within it like going to vegas and um, orlando which was really fun mm-hmm. and you know, a lot of competition um a lot of film um a lot of scouting so it's like um back, like real basketball i know you have to do that for real basketball um so you know there's a lot more into it than just playing the game um you're playing for a lot of money you have teammates you're representing an nba organization so there's a lot that goes into it a lot of pressure uh i would say if you're you know, you get pressured, yeah, but, like, I'm not the, really the type to get pressured like that. <laughs> so I, I'm curious to know because I'm I'm a, a big fan of uh, Mel East and hit the way he trash talks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you're a little bit more on the quiet side, but uh, what was it like sitting beside Mel East in the uh, the studios in New York City? And, and maybe what was the funniest thing that, uh, that he ever said in trash talking that ma- made you laugh? Um, you know, I, was, I think I sat next to him, like, almost every single game, like, of my career there i think i don't remember but i know it's close but um you know he he's a great dude like um he gets us all hyped when he trash talks to the team like that's really good to have on your team mm-hmm. and the funniest thing um he, i don't know I, I think the funny thing when he called somebody pillow soft like people were like what <laughs> somebody what pillow soft a pillow soft oh yes yeah pillow yeah. soft uh that's that had me like yeah kind of laughing in the middle of the game <laughs> so i thought that was funny yeah, there's de- definitely some good trash talking out there. Yeah. Um, so now, unfortunately, you were not retained for season three. Um, so when you found that out, what were your thoughts? What, what went through your mind? Um, to be honest, um, I just, you know, it was going to be a tough decision, I knew. Um, obviously, they're doing what's best for the team. So I, I support them. Like, they, um, I've played for them for two years. I'm still never going to not like them or, you know, I'm always going to support them. So I just know that I just got to work harder in this offseason. Um, I'm not technically 100% guaranteed. Well, I'm not. Um, so, you know, I just got to keep working, you know, showcase my skills. Um, I just got to put in the work again, just like I'm undrafted. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I guess the opportunity will come up uh, to maybe get drafted by uh, one of the expansion teams or maybe the Celtics can retain you after the expansion. I'm not sure, but uh, we won't get into that right now. <laughs> uh, but what are you doing, really? What's your focus to prepare for Season 3? Um, just making sure my mental health is well also. Um, trying to grind the game as much as I can, making sure I get the exercise I need. Like Just overall taking care of myself is definitely my number one priority. And then, yeah, just playing a lot of 2K, I'm making sure I'm not losing my rest or being rusty. So, yeah, I have so, to, you know, keep playing. And, and what kind of advice would you give to prospects out there who are now um, taking on the journey of the Combine, wanting to get themselves prepared? What, what advice would you give them from a player's perspective? Um, I would say try to get in all these leagues like WR, MPBA, any of these competitive leagues because those are the most, um, those are where the scouts look the most and the coaches. Um, always be a good teammate, be positive, try to stream as much as you can so you can get your brand out there. Um, people like people like that a lot. Um, and just keep hooping, honestly, and then make sure you're ready for the combine. Always be communicative. Because in the at the end of the day, those tournaments and those leagues aren't gonna help you get in. The combine is gonna be what really gets you in. So you got to make sure you do well in the combine. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and maybe share with uh, with everybody out there uh, anything you'd like to promote about yourself. Maybe your Twitch channel, uh, your Twitter. Uh, if you have a YouTube channel, somewhere where uh, people and other league GMs and coaches can go and check it out. Um, if you guys ever want to just check me out, I stream everything, all of my platforms on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, they're all Profusion TV. Um, so if you ever want to keep updated with me, send me a message if you guys need anything or any advice. Like I try to respond to all of them. And yeah, we stream comp games. If you guys are ever interested in watching whenever these leagues come out and yeah. That, I mean, using Profusion TV awesome. as your brand right across the board, that's brilliant. Just like from a social media perspective, you make it so easy. Um, Dave and I have, we, I mean, we follow a lot of gamers and a lot of uh, players just to, to see who's up and coming and whatnot. And it can get so confusing trying to figure out like, oh, okay, their YouTube is this and, and that. And, I mean, one of, the, one of the reasons why we created the 2K profile was because of that reason that people were having a harder time branding themselves. So we thought, why not put it all in one place? And then it doesn't matter what the, maybe the name of your YouTube or your Instagram or your, your Twitter is. So, But pra bravo to you for coming up with Profusion TV. When yeah. I saw that, I thought it was a brilliant brand. <laughs> yeah, it's been like that for... Um like ever since I started playing 2K seriously and taking this Twitch thing serious and Twitter, like I, it's always been probably TV. I've never changed it. So I just figured like, why would I change it? If, you know, doing well with it. That's awesome. And, and when we're finished uh, this interview, I'm going to DM you my gamer tag. Uh, Cause if you're ever looking for a five, nine shooting guard who can't shoot, uh, hook, you know, oh, you know. Definitely. You can he's a good bench up. warmer. Uh, I, I have a center, you know, I can, I can grab the boards. <laughs> Oh, I've had uh, my hand up for five years. I think you have one last question, or no, no that was it, eh? That All was right, it. so uh, well, we can't thank you enough for coming on the show, and and your patience, obviously. Um, your insight is, I'm sure, going to help a lot of people out there who are listening. Uh, they may not have been able to tune in right now while we're live, but this will rerun and. Uh, it, it, you know, your advice, your experience, all that goes a long way for anybody who's trying to get into the league, um, especially because we're so early on in, mm -hmm. in its birth of the NBA 2K League and uh, guys like you, you know, two years in a row and probably three. So <laughs> we can't thank you enough and uh, we hope to see you back in uh, season three. I appreciate you guys a lot. It was fun being on the show. If you guys have anything to, um, in the chat, you guys want to DM me about on Twitter, go ahead. You know, I'm here for any advice. So, yeah, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, bud. All right. All right, so uh, we are going to take another break. And uh, when we come back, we have some WR updates. And, uh, yeah, so uh, don't go away, guys. We'll be right back. What's good, everybody? It's Paul B., NBA 2K League Pro for Wizards District Gaming for Season 2. If you did not make the NBA 2K League yet, chances are it's not because you're not good at the game. It's probably because you did not get noticed by another team in the league, and that's where 2K Zone comes in. Before Season 2, 
2K Zone did a prospect profile interview for me, and I can honestly say that it played a key role in helping me make the league for season two. Well, for season three, 2K Zone is taking it up a notch. They're now offering prospects the very own 2K Gamer profile website. I'm really excited about this because it's gonna help me get back in the league for season three. The best part is that it's simple, easy, and very quick to set up. The guys at 2K Zone will help you every step of the way and have your custom site up and running in no time. Check them out at 2kpowerb.com. Go to www.2kzn.com to get yours today so that you can stand out from the crowd and get noticed. Good luck, and hope to see y'all on the big stage in Season 3. Okay, we are back. Uh, that's a great Paul B. Hey, what a guy. He... He just stood up and said, you know what, guys, whatever you need, and we'll help you out. And uh, he went out and got a prospect profile, uh, 2K profile, almost immediately. So he was one of the uh, the first ones on board for that. This is almost turning into the Wizards District Gaming. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, we had Patrick Cross, in, we had uh, <laughs> Paul B's had seven commercials on so far. Uh, so you know and what? Maybe the Wizards should like uh, give us some compensation for this because we're giving you free advertising. Can, can, here. can we get their logo <laughs> up here instead of? No, we're kidding. Uh, it's funny how that worked out. That was that was not by choice. It just sort of happened that way because we actually had a different. Uh, pro tip lined up and uh, unfortunately that person was unable to make it so uh, we thank Patrick for jumping in on that one yep. um, okay so we're back and uh, now we're gonna give you some WR updates obviously Dave there's not a whole lot of updates going on fix private matchmaking fix please. private matchmaking would be great um, <laughs> so but I just want to remind you yeah. stick stick around to the end uh, of these updates um, we will be announcing a contest it's big yeah and I it's think uh, it'd be well worth um, your sticking around so uh, please do that. Awesome. So in this part of the show, uh, we would normally be bringing you, you know, news on the latest WR League action. But as everybody knows, private matchmaking uh, is still not quite fixed. Uh, Patrick mentioned it was fixed. Uh, who knows? But uh, since things really haven't started up yet for NBA 2K20, we thought we'd take this opportunity to go back in time, uh, maybe share a little bit of history about the WR League, uh, and do a quick recap on maybe some past champions, uh, of which I am not, um, of the most recent seasons. Someday, Dave. You know what? Dare to dream. Dare to dream. All right. So um, we do have a couple of interesting stats about the WR League. This is interesting. Um, so they, they were basically started back in uh, 2015. And they've had so far over 35,000 pro am games played. That's what? Over 35,000. That's insane. You know what? That's equal to the number of games you have to play to grind a badge. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Probably close. Uh, and then I've also uh, they have uh, over 100,000 in cash prizes given out already. That's amazing. It's huge. Um, so just uh, a little breakdown. I mean, if we start with the WR pro am league. By the way, do you know what WR stands for? Wow. I did some digging. I found out. I stumbled upon it by accident. Uh, it actually stands for Willis Reed, uh, who played in the NBA back in the ah. 70s. Uh, so it's actually the Willis Reed Pro Am League. I thought that was kind of interesting. I thought I threw that in. Uh, but if we look back and we remind everybody who walked away with championships uh, in the last couple of seasons, uh, we had on the PS4 side, in Season 17, we had Next Level mm -hmm. as the champions. And we also had in uh, season 18, PS4 side, Lifestyle were the champions. So we're going to look for Lifestyle to repeat in season 19. And Dave, on the Xbox side, um, season 8 champions were No Look, and season 7 champions were Generation Next. Now, if we move over to the WR Select League, I love the Select League because it's really run quite differently than the WR Pro-Am League. Uh, I mean, the, in the WR League, you enter as a team, mm -hmm. uh, but in WR Select, it's it's very similar to the NBA 2K League and how it's structured, uh, in that each franchise, and uh, you know, if you go on the site, you can see a map of the US and Canada, and you can see where all the franchises are from in, in the different cities, uh, but the players enter a draft and go through like a play open gyms and go through a combine, mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe have a chance to, uh, to have private workouts or interviews with each of the GMs who might want to have a, a closer look at them to get drafted. 
and then the franchises compete through a season for a championship so it's very much like a uh, a traditional mm -hmm. uh, a traditional league it's pretty cool yeah it's very cool and as of right now dave i know that uh we don't have a date yet for when the next season will start obviously we're waiting yeah um so just if you're out there watch the wr select twitter account which is at wr select yeah. and any information will will be forthright with that um but what i i find very cool dave is that the wr select is that league actually sends out championship rings so like you get a ring it's not just like hey congratulations a real ring. it's a real ring you know like it, 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 awesome I, I would love to see one of these <laughs> rings awesome. like live and in person uh, to see uh, i mean a traditional championship ring usually is like encrusted with diamonds and emeralds and all kinds <laughs> of things and it's worth gazillion dollars gazillions but, but just looking at the picture the yeah, pictures I, look I don't fantastic know if I have that. man um yeah, yeah we don't have, have a picture, picture but uh no. But anyway, let, let's take a minute and uh, we'll recognize some champions from Season 3 of the uh, WR Select League. Mm -hmm. Starting on the PS4 side, Season 3 champions were the Tulsa Talons. Yep. And uh, on the Xbox side, Season 3 champions, the Motor City Torque, who, uh, th that was a repeat for them. Yeah. So they're going for a three-peat, Motor City Torque. So congratulations to them. Awesome. So that, that kind of concludes the, the WR updates. We will definitely have more once the, uh, sure. the season starts. Um, yeah. But we wanted to introduce that there is this segment and uh, we'll try and give you as much information. I know the guys at WR are constantly letting us know anything that's new, but they're also tweeting it. Yeah, sorry, um, I yeah, didn't go ahead. to cut you off, but we, we should uh, announce that registration because there was some bit Oh, there was some confusion, yeah. yeah. Uh, registration is still open, Yeah. Uh, but you, if you had registered by September 24th uh, for the WR Pro-Am League, then your team is automatically entered into the WR Open, which will be this, the tournament that happens before the season actually kicks off. Um, so that is cut off, but registration is still open. Um, so if you have a team or want to put a team in, you can still do so. Do it. Yeah, for sure. Take advantage. All right, so now we'd like to end the show by telling you about a very special promotion we have for you. So we here at the 2K Zone have created something pretty cool for the to help you get uh, seen by the NBA 2K League, uh, and it's called the 2K Profile. It's your very own website where league GMs and coaches can go. They can learn about you as a prospect in one convenient place. So you know they no longer have to search for what's your Twitter, what's your YouTube, what's your Instagram, or you know, now there's Mixer that's getting involved. So there's a lot of different social media that you all have. But what we did was we created a 2K profile that gives you that one spot. And if you're watching from the beginning, you would have seen uh, Paul B doing a little um, advertisement there. Um, so um, we have a lot of people. I mean, we got Bobby Buckets. Go check out Bobby Buckets. He did a 2K profile. Uh, it looks fantastic. Uh, Paul B, as you mentioned. Yep. Um, I think the, Dev Goss has one too. Dev Goss has one. Um, I Pratt just, uh, just got one. Um, Profusion has one. Profusion. Anthony White has one. So, Anthony White. Uh, so it's happening. You can yeah. see guys are getting out there. And as that happens, we on our end are also trying to create and make it better and better. I mean, that's our goal is to keep adding to it so that uh, it grows. And the more it grows, then, well, it just benefits everybody else. Can I tell them what's on uh, there? Please do. The, this one. Um, I got to give credit to Bruce because uh, he's the brains behind this. Uh, I would normally take all the credit, but uh, <laughs> in this case, I won't. But it's really cool because you uh, on the on your personal website, you get your picture. I mm -hmm. mean, it's a beautiful profile picture. Um, then you've got a spot for a bio, so you can put in some text, uh, a biography about yourself. And then you've got three windows where you can put in screenshots of your Pro-Am stats. And when the combine's going, you put mm. screenshots of your combine stats in there. Yeah, it's awesome. So people can go there and see. Uh, you have the option of having an audio interview. So we're going to interview you. Yeah. Pop the audio in there, or you can upgrade to a video interview. So have an actual video interview on your website. Also, you've got all your channels, your Twitter, your Twitch, whatever you want to put on there. We'll link directly to your channel, and then uh, three spots for highlight reels. So actual highlight game film of yourself. Yeah. So it's and all in one spot. The only other thing, I, I've had a few people who've gotten a profile and they ask me, oh, like, 
do I do I have to get an agent because we put a spot so I was a professional actor and, and as a professional actor you needed professional representation especially when you get hired by for example now it would be the NBA 2K League mm -hmm. you really should have a lawyer who's going to look through the contract that you're about to sign and and I know it sounds like oh it'll cost me money for that but that is what it is to become a professional and so I put a section that says agent and there are agents out there. I don't know sure. if everybody is aware, but there are agents out there that will represent you. They help guide you, um, and they'll assist you in getting into the 2K uh, NBA 2K League. So that's that's why that's there. So all you got to do is go to www.2kzn.com, uh, become a member, and you can choose at what level you want to be. And uh, it's a very simple process. So are we going to tell them about the contest? So tell them about the contest. Okay, now, here's where things get very interesting for you. Now, starting now until October the 11th, everybody that becomes a 2K Zone member, you will get your name put into a draw where we will pick one person to have an appearance on this very show in the Prospect Profile segment. So tonight... So like Perfusion, you. yeah. So you're going to come on this show, have a pro Prospect Profile interview, and we're going to put that on your 2K Zone profile. Now, how this works is if you become a basic member, you get one entry. Mm -hmm. If you become a pro member, you get two entries into this draw. And if you become a premium member, you get four entries into this draw. Now, for those of you that are already 2K Zone members, don't worry because your names are automatically going to be uh, entered into the draw, so you are not going to lose out. So make sure you, uh, you become a member before October 11th. Yeah, and, and don't fret um, because if you don't get an interview on the show, um, we'll still do an interview with you uh, and that will go on your profile page. And, and the one thing we guarantee is that every time an interview is finished, we tweet it out, we tweet to the GMs and the coaches. They, they saw us do it all last year, so they're somewhat expecting this. Yeah. Um, so don't don't worry if you don't get drawn to be on this show. Um, your your membership and getting that 2K profile is still going to elevate you, and that's the key here. That's all we're trying to do is elevate so that you are seen and you know what's going on. So, all right, that sort of concludes the contest. So yeah. we we'll post that uh, on the we on the website and we'll tweet it out too, just so everybody knows what's going on. Yeah. So uh, we can't thank you all enough. For sure. And if anybody knows how to fix a flat tire on a bike, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Thanks for that, Dave. Uh, we can't thank uh, everybody enough for coming or uh, watching. Uh, we want to obviously give a special thanks to Profusion yeah. and Patrick for coming on the show and being our first guests. Yeah. Um, this was our first live, so it didn't come without any hip, uh, uh, hiccups. It, it did. Uh, we worked through them. I think we're good now. Uh, so please make sure that you follow our, uh, the WR Twitch channel and the 2K Zone Twitter. Uh, turn on notifications so you don't miss any episodes. Next Monday night, we're back. That's right, 7 p.m. live. So until then, thanks for watching, and we will see you next week. Oh, man. Oh, man. You know why we're here. You think something can hand it to you? You think you're going to have to work for it? No grind, no effort. It's just going to fall in your lap. <laughs> that ain't the way it works, though. You know why we here. We're going to go take what we want. Uh, yeah, I'm back up on my shit again They reached out cause they knew I'd make a hit again I hope you listening Cause I'm trying to make the league So who I gotta talk to to get me in I'm untamed, all I know is a fly pressure I've been laced, I'm a fly dresser I break out every time they try to keep me in I get it in, I'm royalty, they bow down just to kiss my team Gotta make it happen, I've been going through a major slump Been running rank, trying to come across a major bump What is calm? Hey, my Say they tough. I'm next up and I'm only gonna say it once. Be the best, it's earned, not giving. Dream chasing, bag chasing, tight living. God sent, thinks nothing. Y'all tripping, I get on that. Yes, check. All women, I live good though. Can't complain about my lifestyle. When it's black, these lights out. You don't want no smoke with me right now. Listen up, pipe down, undrafted. I ain't even get a car. This year I'm going hard. Talking like you better than what you get.
Come on, 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 come